Good afternoon. <laughs> um, I'm Karen Solomon. I'm a, a deputy editor at the New England Journal and a physician at the Brigham and a co-organizer of this symposium with Ari Bernstein and Renee Salas. And I just want to say that we are thrilled to uh, have seen the enormously positive response to the symposium and we are um, grateful to all of you for taking the time out of your schedules to come join us. This is really a novel collaboration. Um, the journal came together with the um, Harvard Global Health Institute, Sea Change, and Harvard Medical School with the support of multiple hospitals in the greater Boston area and also the Mass Medical Society so that we could come together and explore effects of the climate crisis on our day-to-day -day practices and our healthcare delivery and work together to explore ways of improving our clinical care and our resiliency. So um, before I introduce our speakers, apparently I'm supposed to do a little housekeeping. So bathrooms are out that door. Um, number two, um, apparently Wi-Fi password is in your agenda. I believe that is the end of housekeeping. Um, there's no password? That's, the, that's why it's not in your agenda. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right, in any case, um, it is now my great pleasure to announce um, or to introduce uh, the two speakers who are giving opening remarks. Um, so uh, I will introduce both and you can come one after the other. But uh, Dr. Eric Rubin is my boss. He is, uh, the, <laughs> he is a fantastic guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he, he is now editor-in-chief of the New England Journal, um, an associate physician specializing in infectious disease at the Brigham. He was previously the chair um, of, the, uh, of immunology and infectious diseases at the Harvard TH Scan School of Public Health. So he will be speaking, followed by Dr. David Gollin from the medical school. He's the George Minot Professor of Medicine. Um, he is Dean for Research Operations and Global Programs. And previously, he was HMS Dean for Basic Science and Graduate Education and a Special Advisor for Global Programs. He's also a physician in the Department of Medicine, specializing in hematology and um, an educator. So I want to thank both of you and turn it over to you. Thanks, Karen. It, it's a kind of odd place to be speaking because um, this is the ultimate place to come and preach to the converted. Um, but I, I did want to make uh, one point, which is we read all the time about climate change in the popular press, and we read about the ocean, how the oceans are rising, how habitat is being lost, uh, and, um, um, and how islands are being washed over and grand hurricanes are coming, and all of that is true. Um, but for us as clinicians, I think we see this crisis differently. Um, I'm an infectious disease clinician, um, and the mosquitoes, which carry malaria and dengue fever, um, which used to be tropical um, insects, now you can find in Connecticut. Um, and we are looking at a change that has already occurred and that is going to affect our patients every day. And I think that that provides us with two important responsibilities. One is as communicators, as, as doctors, as clinicians who have unique um, relationships with our patients, we should be out there spreading the message that this is not something that happens just on the coasts. This is not something that is only going to uh, create hurricanes that wipe out uh, the islands in the Caribbean, but it's something that is going to affect people's daily lives. Um, and, and the second, of course, is that that change has already occurred. And I think it's really important to think about what, are, as, as the climate has changed, what does that mean for our practice? What does that mean for our patients? How do we have to think about changes um, in, the, in, in our environment that are really going to affect uh, uh, medicine and public health? Um, I, this is a very important issue. I think that we're a medical journal and not a, a climate change journal or a meteorology journal. Um, and yet we, I think, are taking it very seriously, in part because Karen comes to my office pretty much daily and says, this is the most important um, threat to, to people in the world. <laughs> um, and so I want to thank all the um, organizers for um, putting this together. I, I, I think, um, I, I think it, it is a really important issue. And I just apologize. I'm going to have to leave because it turns out there's another infectious disease crisis going on now. So I'm going to miss this, but I, I leave this in uh, the organizers, and particularly Karen's good hands. Thanks.
Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for attending this critically important symposium on climate change and clinical practice. I have the privilege today of representing Dean George Daly, who regrets that he's una unavailable to address you personally. As Eric just said, climate change is a reality for all of us. Indeed, it may well be the most urgent issue facing humanity today. Of course, the response to climate change must be multi-pronged, and as citizens of the world, we need to counter the factors that contribute to climate change and support the science needed to mitigate those factors. And you'll hear about some of those factors today at the symposium. But an equally important topic of today's symposium is how the medical community can respond to the relationships between climate change and human health and innovate solutions to improve clinical practice and healthcare delivery in the face of climate change. This may lead you to ask, is Harvard Medical School actually engaged in developing solutions to societal problems such as climate change? Some decades ago, the answer to this question may have been equivocal. But today, under Dean Daly's leadership, the answer to this question is a resounding yes. Across the spectrum of biomedicine and human health, we are developing programs and investing resources to address some of the most pressing issues facing humanity today. These include new initiatives in therapeutics, data science, healthy aging, epigenetics, healthcare delivery, and many more. For example, in the therapeutics initiative, we are forming disease-related interest groups across the HMS faculty and supporting them with new types of innovation fellows. We are raising substantial funds to support the translational science needed to move the brilliant basic science discoveries made in HMS laboratories toward drug device and diagnostic development and clinical practice. We are probing the practices used by biopharmaceutical companies and regulatory agencies to develop, evaluate, and approve medicines in the US and around the world, and asking whether new approaches can help to bring new therapeutics to the benefits of patients faster, better, and cheaper. And we're training the next generation of leaders in therapeutics through courses, programs, workshops, and other modalities designed for learners at all stages of development from undergraduate college students through medical students, PhD and master's students, and postdoctoral fellows to junior and senior faculty. So can HMS do the same for the effects of climate change on clinical practice and healthcare delivery? The answer is certainly yes. Harvard Medical School recognizes the urgency of this problem and the need to take action to address the climate crisis head on, both in terms of the education of our students and the broader community and the need to develop long-term sustainable solutions. Indeed, with your participation in today's symposium, we are starting on this journey together. We greatly welcome your participation. In fact, we can't do it without your participation. So thank you so much again, and please enjoy this afternoon's symposium.